Welcome to the High Adventure Scouting Podcast. This is the source for all things high adventure for scouts, scouters, and anyone else interested in promoting high adventure trips for our youth. You can find all kinds of great high adventure options for your scouts at highadventurescouting.com. We are constantly updating the list of cool trips, and we want your input on your best trip. Welcome, High Adventure enthusiasts. We're excited, as always, to highlight a High Adventure base on this edition of the High Adventure Scouting Podcast. Now, today, we're joined by Greg Zanat. He's the High Adventure Director for the Michigan, Cross, Michigan Crossroads Council. Uh, they run the Coal Canoe Base and the Great Lakes Sailing Adventure in Michigan. Uh, so we've got a two-for-one today. So, Greg, thanks for joining us today on the High Adventure Scouting Podcast. Thanks for having me, Rob. Happy to be here. All right. Well, I'm anxious to hear about both of these programs. Um, as I mentioned before we started recording, I'm kind of a high adventure geek and I like to, I like to hear about this stuff. So, um, you know, I've got some some questions. I'll make sure we, we keep on track so we can let everybody know what's going on uh, with your programs. But let's just jump in and, and I'm going to let you kind of take the mic and tell us about both programs and uh, we'll just kind of take it from there. Sound good? Sounds good. Well, let's um, let's start with the canoe base because that's that's the older of the programs. And if if you're unfamiliar with Cole Canoe Base, we are uh, about a 1,500 acre base in northern Michigan, and we are located right in the middle of the Rifle River. The river actually kind of cuts our property in two. So years and years and years ago, we we've always been using the river, and and people started. Um, started building overnight programs and our, our 50 miler is still our most popular river trip today. That program evolved in the early 2000s to a full scale high adventure program. So at the time, um, we immediately expanded over to the Asabo River, not far away from us. And now we're running programs up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula at Pictured Rocks, as well as Grand Island and some other, other attractions up there. So from a canoeing and a paddling standpoint, we have trips uh, running all the way up to 100 miles, and we have day trips starting at about five miles and everything in between. We've got uh, one, two, three, four day options, 25 milers, 50 milers, 75 milers, just about everything in between there. And we've got groups from all over the country that have actually come up just to, uh, to paddle with us and, and see a little bit of what we've got in northern Michigan. Uh, a few years after that, uh, there used to be a program in Michigan that ran by the name of Prevailing Winds, and that was a liveaboard sailing program in the former Tall Pines Council. Unfortunately, that program closed down in the mid-2000s, and some benefactors worked, uh, worked in 2014 to get it back off the ground. They went out and bought a 52-foot uh, Alden Keach sailboat and uh, donated it through some uh, benefactors to the Michigan Crossroads Council, and that became the modern-day uh, Great Lakes Sailing Adventure. Retriever is a one-of-a-kind vessel. It is outfit for as many as 12 participants in addition to our captain and first mate, and it is a one-week liveaboard sailing program in the upper Great Lakes, um, based right in, right in the Straits of Mackinac area, if you can picture the, uh, the state of Michigan. All right. <clears throat> well, that's, uh, I, I don't think I want to go there in the fall, but, uh, uh, maybe in the summer. <laughs> good, good fall colors, good fall colors. Yeah. I'm told I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not much of a cold water guy myself, but yeah, well, I, I've been I've been to the uh, as people listen, I talk about the Boundary Waters trip I've taken, and uh, uh, so I've been up there, and that water's cold, but it's not as bad as uh, in the summer. So <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Uh, it sounds it sounds to me that the uh, the coal. I'll just start with that one, the coal canoe base and and those programs. Uh, it sounds like you've got a little bit of flexibility on the uh, the mileage, and depending on what the group wants to do. Uh, is, is that something that, uh, is fairly set up or you know, from the beginning or does the, the unit work with, uh, Cole to, and the volunteers and the, uh, the staff there to kind of determine 
where they want to go, what they want to do, and how how long they want to go. What's the what's the setup? We have we have a little bit of both, I would say. Um, we have a, a number of built, ready to go float plans, uh, like the fifty miler that I mentioned, and and the hundred miler, where it's pretty much cut and dry. Here's what you do, and here's here's when you do it. Um, but we, we do have a, a number of units that request kind of more customized flow plans, especially groups that want to go along with summer camp. So um, we have a lot of troops that um, they send half the troop to summer camp. And then once everybody's there, the older boys go out on a canoe trip for the week or they go backpacking or something. And then the younger boys and uh, younger scouts stay in base camp and work on more traditional you know, summer camp programs. So especially with those units, sometimes we'll, we'll make accommodations and custom itineraries because they might have, you know, they want to be in camp for the Monday night program or they want to be, you know, there for parents night or something. So um, we, we kind of do, do whatever we can to serve, to serve the scouts and give them the trip that they want. Now that, that, that brings up a question I always ask is about, you know, if there's summer camp, you know, merit badge type opportunities near there for the rest of the troop. Is that at your facility or is it in a camp nearby or what's the, what's the situation with uh, a traditional summer camp program? So with Cole Canoe Base, our, our traditional summer camp is a, uh, we are a patrol cooking camp. We are, are one of the, uh, one of the more prevalent uh, programs in the area, I would say. And uh, our, High Adventure program actually lives within the summer camp world. So, um, like like I said, we have we have a tremendous amount of, of troops. Probably probably about half of the units that use our High Adventure program are doing it at the same time that the rest of the rest of the troop is in summer camp, which is a really good really good opportunity for a lot of reasons. It first of all. Um, makes transportation and logistics a lot easier for the troop because everybody shows up to the same same place and the high adventure people do their program throughout the week and the regular summer camp people do their program throughout the week um which has been really a a big draw to our program and uh, like likewise with the sailing adventure we have the uh ability to use our uh resident camp at coal canoe base as a base camp for the sailing adventure. So we have some groups that do that as well. Okay. So you can, you can do both options within and, you know, have, have, uh, kid kids or scouts in base camp doing traditional programs. And then the uh, older youth going out on one or two or both of these programs, uh, high adventure program. Okay, cool. All right. That that's always as a scout leader myself, um, that's something we I look I'm curious about because I know other scout leaders will look at that also. So uh, let's see. Now, is there a uh, for canoes? I know in some several states like New York and Minnesota and, and other areas, there's a maximum crew size uh, as as they're they're going through the uh, their their trek. Is is there a max crew size for you guys or for the uh, the rivers that you're you're on for the program? Uh, we don't we don't really have a maximum crew size per se. We uh, we would say we want to try to keep it in the the eight to twelve uh, youth okay. category. But we've had we've had some bigger troops that come through, and you know we just have to uh, uh, you know double up on campsites or something like that to to make it work. Where we do start getting into some more strict size limits is going to be with um, some of our backpacking programs, like at Pictured Rocks, for example. The National Park Service kind of dictates what we can and can't do there. But as far as the the canoeing and the river trips are are concerned, we don't really have a hard capacity. Is there a uh, what, is there a staff member that goes along on these these trips, or is this uh, like like a lot of places you're able to kind of do it? on your own as a unit? Um, generally, most of our trips are what we would call unit led. We, we have okay. staff available to, to help and do logistics and things, but we're not necessarily sending a staff member on the trip. Uh, with some of our, some of our bigger trips, it's, I, it's an option. And then, um, 
we do have some provisional trips where we'll send staff along. But the idea of, of the program is most of our trips are unit led and we're there more to be the resource and, and the facilitators, if you will. Awesome. Awesome. Every program's a little different. So I have to, I like to ask, and you did mention provisional. That's, that's always a question. I'm curious about whether you have that option or if that's a, a common thing for, um, you know, a group of, you know, a couple scouts or a couple leaders that want to combine with another group. Yeah. Is that, we, uh, is that easy or is that odd? No, odd, to, odd to see. So let's, there's, there's two different parts there. Let's first talk about the troops where we, you know, we can combine two troops to make a full crew if they don't have leadership or something. Um, we don't have a specific program or avenue set up to do that. However, we do it all the time. Um, but generally what we'll do in that case is, if we know of, you know, I've got a little scratch pad on my desk of troops that are looking for another troop to make it work. And um, I, I more or less get those troops in contact with each other and they they set it up amongst themselves. We've just found it's easier that way. Um, we, we do have a number of provisional programs that we're working with right now as well. And we're trying to expand our provisional opportunities. Um, our big... Our big provisional trip right now is the Great Lakes Kayak Adventure, which if you uh, look through the archives of Boys Life magazine, um, we were actually on the cover with that trip a few years ago. That is a uh, awesome. kayaking tour of northern Michigan and the Great Lakes. So we do pictured rocks in Grand Island. Um, if you're familiar with the lower Taquamanon Falls, we'll paddle up into and around that area, as well as the Straits of Mackinac and some other other cool sites in the in the UP area. Um, in addition to that, we have a provisional ATV trail riding program that uh, we are we're we're running it right now. It's kind of in the new newer phase, so it's always evolving a little bit. And then we do a provisional fifty miler, and we're we're working to expand a lot of our provisionals as we go forward because we're seeing a, a lot more of a demand for that kind of programming. Awesome. And it, it, see, we, I, I initially was uh, talking about canoes and we're, we've gotten into backpacking, kayaking, ATV. I love it. I, I love more options. That's, that's really cool to, to see those kind of things. So uh, do you provide, you know, tents and cook kits and those kind of things, or is that something that the, uh, the crew would need to bring with them on the trip? Typically, the crew is going to be responsible for their own gear. Okay. Um, in a in a canoeing trip, you know, we provide the canoes and the paddles and and life jackets and stuff. Um, but if it's uh, general camping equipment that we would, you know, have a reasonable expectation of somebody in the unit having, we uh, we ask them to bring that themselves because they're first of all probably much more familiar and comfortable with their own equipment than they would be with our stuff. Um, but, uh, beyond that, it, it is a cost saving measure to try to help keep these trips affordable. We, we do have some stuff available as a, uh, on a loan basis. If, if it's needed, you know, I had a troop last summer who got out, they were, uh, on night two of a four day trip and their stove had a problem and they had to, uh, take that out of service. So we gave them another stove, but generally speaking, um, units provide, the lion's share of their own equipment. Right. And how about food? Is that included in the, the fees? Yeah, we do. We do do food. Okay. Um, we do have options available if, if troops want to do their own food. Um, typically, that'd be more in the fall. But uh, during summer camp programs and during our during our peak season, um, we we do all the food and we uh, we arrange food drops along the way if, if they're needed. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, what kind of cost is there, or is there a set cost for, let's say, a, a traditional uh, canoe trip uh, or any of these other other programs that you have going on? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it varies by trip, but right. um, I would say our, our most affordable option uh, would be Rifle River programming. Um, and any activity on the Rifle River is going to be the same price as our resident camps would be. So that's, uh, uh, in 2021, it was, 
um, $160 per adult and uh, $350 per youth. Um, as we get into some of the bigger trips, the price goes up a little bit. Um, our most expensive trip at this time is the ATV trip. That's about $550 a person. Um, but most of our trips fall right into that 400 ish category. Well, I'll tell you with those, uh, those prices are, are pretty good for a high adventure program. And believe me, I've paid, uh, I've been to all four BSA high adventure bases and a couple other, uh, council bases. And I can tell you that <laughs> the council bases are much less expensive and they have some very good programs that, uh, are great experiences. So yeah, and, uh, and and so many of the groups that uh, come through our high adventure program, they're 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 heading for Philmont next summer, or they're going to Northern Tier. So it really is a good opportunity, you know, rather than um, paying a Philmont price twice or two years in a row, you know, you can go up to Pictured Rocks for a fraction of the price and kind of get your feet wet, or hopefully not get your feet wet, but <laughs> um, and, uh, then the next year you can go on to the, the bigger, more, ex more expensive programs at national, um, exactly. which is, is a big draw to our program. I'd say, I would say most of the groups that I'm, I'm working with for next summer are, are, uh, national bound in one direction or another. Right. Absolutely. Now, how early does a unit have to, uh, really get on the, uh, uh, on the horn to, uh, let's say for next summer, how early would they need to kind of do that? So we are, um, working, you know, we're, we're kind of in that phase right now, depending on the trip for the stuff up around pictured rocks and the things where we have to apply for, uh, permits months and months ahead of time. We, we like to have all of that squared away by the first of the year or shortly thereafter. Um, but for most of our canoe trips, we can take reg registrations right, right up. Um, I, I would say up until May, but we, we don't want to cut it that close. Um, but we're, we're doing high adventure um, canoe trip scheduling right up into the spring. Um, the, the other side of the coin would be for the sailing adventure, which I misspoke earlier. The sailing adventure is actually, uh, considerably more expensive than our, our coal canoe base stuff, but still, uh, still less than sea base. Um, the oh, sailing absolutely. adventure. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I was going to go um, kind of circle back on, on that yeah. and, and kind of ask really specific questions about the, uh, uh, uh about that program. So if you want well, to jump can, into we that, can dive let's, into, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, we let's can dive, dive into, into more detail on that. Um, yeah, yeah, let's do it. So as far as scheduling is concerned for the sailing adventure, obviously we only have one boat and we can only use it, um, you know, for one group at a time. So it kind of, um, I, I would say units looking to do that want to start that conversation the summer before they plan to go. Um, and that helps that helps assure your, your chances of getting a week that you want to go. We've got a number of opportunities available still for this upcoming summer, but uh, we're getting down to the point where it might be, you know, it might be late August or something. So we all know the major high adventure bases around the country and they offer some awesome programs. Have you been searching for a cool alternative from your typical high adventure trip? As a scout leader, I want to give our scouts some great alternatives. You need to check out HighAdventureScouting.com. You'll find information on over 30 different council high adventure bases in 24 states. Maybe you're looking for a do-it-yourself option and need some ideas. Maybe you've taken a great trip and you want to share your good fortune with your fellow scouts and scouters. Just send us the details and we'll publish your trip. Whatever your interest, HighAdventureScouting.com is the one-stop shop for all things high adventure. That's HighAdventureScouting.com. Now, you said that's a 12-member a crew. Is that what I've, I yep. heard earlier? Okay. And that, that includes youth and adults. 
Yeah, so okay. the you know the most popular configuration there is going to be ten youth and two adults. Um, mm -hmm. We do have our two crew that'll be on on the boat as well. So there's 14 people on board for the week, which uh, is a uh, quite quite the adventure. They they get to know each other pretty well, but uh, the yeah. the caveat on that is. Um, the pricing for the sailing adventure is actually determined by the voyage and not necessarily by how many people are on it. So okay. if you, you take a week, you get, um, 12 slots. And if you use all 12, then you divide that price by 12. If you can only fill 10 slots, you have to divide it by 10. But Right. So it's, it's, it's a lot like, uh, people are, and they're listening are, are used to hearing about sea base and kind of the uh, uh, the experiences down there so that's a that's kind of a, a this is how much it is and if you have the max you split it you know however it is you split it amongst yourselves so yeah uh, so that's good uh, is there a uh, like like a range of you know from basic voyage to you know extravagant if you want to call it that? Uh, um, kind of a total total cost so the um the price for retriever you're talking about the cost of the trip correct yeah yeah okay. just just give kind of give a range of kind of where we where we're at from here to here so, so we we have two price points um the first is for a week-long voyage which we offer 11 of throughout the course of the summer um, that comes in at just a tick short of $8,000 for the whole trip, mm -hmm. um, which if you break that out, it's uh, less less than 700 a person if, uh, if you mm -hmm. get 12 slots. Um, mm -hmm. The second option that we run is on Labor Day weekend, and that is a long weekend trip, and that's about $4,000. Uh, it's mm -hmm. half the trip, so it's half the cost. Exactly, exactly. Well, um, that's, that, that's very... Uh, you know th those kind of prices, and even if it's a little bit more, that's that's still more uh, less expensive than what I've paid <laughs> at Seabase, which I had a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's it was a di obviously a different experience than what you're going to have uh, in the Great Lakes. You know, it's I'm sure it's yeah, not the... quite as warm, and there's some different <laughs> fish. And <laughs> the Great but, Lakes uh, are, uh, are are pretty pretty cold. They're pretty intense. <laughs> Um, yeah. but we do in the Straits area, there's a lot of really cool stuff to see. There's some historic sites. So the, uh, our captains are, are pretty well acquainted with the area, which is good because, uh, occasionally you'll get some, some pretty, pretty, uh, gnarly waters and, and pretty crazy yeah. storms and things that'll go through there. Um, fortunately not so much in the summertime, but, uh, our captains are very good and they've, they tend to build the trips around what the water is doing and how the weather is projected to be that week. So every every trip aboard Retriever ends up being a little bit different. You know, one week they might go to St. Helena Island and Drummond Island. The next week they might just go to um, somewhere in the Lachino Islands. Or we had one one group a few years ago made it all the way down to Beaver Island, but without uh, having a map in front of you, these are probably just places, uh, places in the <laughs> exactly. water. So. Exactly. And I, I'm not as familiar with Michigan uh, as uh, maybe other listeners are. I just haven't, outside of work, I haven't done a whole lot of driving through Michigan, especially the upper part of Michigan, uh, the, the pretty part. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least that's my, my impression. So um, now it sounds like these are, these kind of uh, groups are pretty well set ahead of time. Uh, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of opportunity for provisional type groups unless they need, you know, one or two spots. Is that accurate yeah, or am I that, not reading that correctly? That is accurate. Um, and we are, we keep talking amongst ourselves about doing um, like a provisional week on Retriever. And uh, we're going to get there one day. We're just not there yet. Um, right. but we, we do yeah. occasionally have troops that are looking for, you know, looking for a couple more scouts to fill out their roster or something. And, um, like we do at the canoe base, we do our best to, to put those people in contact with each other. But, um, 
at this point, our, our provisional program is still probably, uh, probably two years out if we're, we're being honest. Sure, sure. Well, you only have eleven voyages uh, each year, uh, basically during the summer. So that's that's not a lot. So you, I mean, that's uh, it, it. You don't really have to do a lot of that at this point. So, but it's neat that that's in the future. So, now I assume on this adventure that the uh, you'll sleep on the boat, uh, or is that is that yep. accurate? Okay, all right. Yep. You, uh, you sleep on the boat, you cook on the boat, you pretty much live on the boat. Um, when you're, when you're in port, certainly, uh, the, you know, you have opportunities to not be on the boat. Um, <laughs> Mac Mackinac Island is a, uh, very popular attraction in that region. So all of our, all of our crews generally will visit Mackinac Island and the scouts will go out and explore the, uh, the different touristy things to do around there. Um, the boat is in port every night. It's either, it's either tied to a dock or it's on a mooring ball every night, which, um, you know, a lot that sleeping is, uh, reasonably, reasonably able to do so on, on that. Um, but they're, so they're it's, living it's on the not boat. like, so it's not like you would, uh, like I, 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 I experienced it at sea base where you, when you're out, you're out and you're, you know, uh, you, you may anchor uh, in a cove somewhere. And it sounds like this is more, you, you kind of go out and then you come back each night. Is that pretty? Um, they, they go out and they're in a different place every night, but right, they're, right. they're somewhere every night. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that sounds really cool. I've always uh, wanted to learn more information about the uh, sailing adventure because that just sounds like a cool thing. Yeah, uh, since I've been uh, been south, that'd be cool to go north and and see what you guys have going on. So, what other things did we leave out that we haven't talked about about either Cole Canoe, Canoe Base or the the Great Lake Sailing Adventure? Um, well, there's a few. Let's let's go down the list. Uh, with with the sailing adventure, there's one one big thing that uh, I I forgot to mention where it's that that price. Um, that eight thousand dollars for the week does not include food. Okay, yeah, um, that's so, right. I knew re- I read that before, yeah. but I forgot to ask about it. <laughs> so the the unit will uh, do their grocery shopping ahead of time, and and we have uh, you know methods, and we have the ability to to help with that, especially for a lot of groups that come out of state. You know, we we want to have their food ready for them when they get there. But um, the unit will build their own menu and uh kind of work it amongst how they how they want to do it themselves and then they'll be able to to cook and prepare that throughout the course of the week so um yeah <laughs> so we've covered we'll a lot of ground in, we've, we've in covered a lot I'm, I'm uh yeah. I'm trying to go through a, a mental checklist here you know it's while we're talking about retriever i'll just kind of the highlights of uh she is a uh, 52 foot Alden keep Alden catch built in the eighties. I believe it's been retrofit a few times. She was originally built as a, um, pleasure craft for a, uh, old automotive executive at the time. And then, um, converted into a race boat. And then, uh, ultimately we, we ended up with her in, uh, around 2014, but through a, a series of retrofits and uh, some storied past, uh, Retrievers won the Chicago to Mackinac race a couple times. She's crossed the Atlantic a couple times. Uh, very cool boat, very storied history, and uh, one of one of the uh, one of the more recognizable boats that's in that area just because of it's so big. Um, <laughs> Very cool boat. If you're ever ever in the area, stop by, even if it's just to, to see her and uh, take a couple pictures. That's awesome. Well, I've seen pictures of it. I think on the on the website, so that's cool. Um, I'll go go back over to the uh, the Cole High Adventure side. Uh, just tell you about some cool things that are on the horizon. Um, you know, we had talked a lot about our canoeing and mentioned briefly that we uh, we do some backpacking programs as well. Something that we are really on the cusp of and getting getting more 
more into right now is kayaking and, and open water kayaking opportunities. So we've got a few trips right now that are, um, they're, they're officially on the books, but they're, they're still new and, uh, you know, kind of in the, in the hashing out the details phase, but, um, We've got a the Grand uh, Grand Island kayaking adventure where scouts will actually kayak out to Grand Island in Munising Bay, spend the week on the island doing different activities. There's uh, mountain biking opportunities, a lot of trails, swimming opportunities, as well as we're working with the Forest Service for some conservation opportunities. We're also expanding our kayaking around pictured rocks, as well as um, trying to, trying to get more multifaceted trips in. So we've got a trip that we're planning for this summer where scouts will actually spend a couple days paddling at pictured rocks, and then they'll spend a few days, uh, hiking across pictured rocks before coming back down to the, the, uh, lower peninsula. So a lot of really exciting things on the horizon, a lot of, a lot of really, uh, cool programs coming down the pipe. Well, that's awesome. Well, you know, this is the exact type of information that, that I like to to get for these these podcast episodes and let other people know outside of the area that may not know about your programs what you have going on. So that I think I think we've done that, and I I appreciate you uh, taking some time today. Great. Well, hey, thanks thanks for having me, Rob. I appreciate uh, appreciate you taking the time and help helping us get our uh, message out a little bit here. All right. Well, I want to thank Greg Zidane. High Adventure Director for the Michigan Crossroads Council for joining us today. Now, you can get more information on their programs. Cole Canoe Base has its own website. It's colecanoebase.com. And the Great Lakes Sailing Adventure uh, can be found at Michigan Scouts, michiganscouting.org slash high-adventure. Or just go to their website and, and look for the outdoor programs. It's, it's pretty easy to find. Thanks for joining us today. And remember to tell your friends about this podcast. You can find us online at highadventurescouting.com, on Facebook or Instagram. If you have any questions or ideas for future podcasts, just email us at info at highadventurescouting.com. This podcast and website are independent and not affiliated with any youth organization. Happy High Adventure! This has been a production of High Adventure Resources.